Welcome back. So we've got the salmon going. And then the second thing I did was add the scallops because the salmon's going to take a little longer to cook. Then we're going to go to the scallops. Now, how do you know when it's time to turn the scallops? Is if you come in here with a spatula and see they just flip. I didn't have to scrape them. They're nice and caramelized on one side. Now that's a great indication. The salmon, the scallops almost tell you, okay, buddy, time to flip me over. You know, it's just like a, a little touch. They kind of roll over pretty easy. You didn't scrape them. That's a great indicator. So salmon went first. We got our scallops. Now we're going to add our shrimp, okay? So this is only going to go for another couple of minutes. Now, after we do that, what we need to talk about is our risotto. So we've got the ingredients that we showed you earlier. To finish this whole thing, our risotto is going to need a little bit of cheese. It's going to need a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. So I got all my ingredients ready to go. And I'm going to use a little bit of white wine because I think the uh, risotto really should have a little bit of white wine in it. So let me just flip my shrimp over. See how fast the shrimp cook? Okay, shrimp side one, side two. My salmon is cooked nicely. My scallops, the other side came loose. They're almost ready to go. Okay, so what we're going to do now is get another pan here. We're going to talk about uh, the risotto. Now, you can flavor risotto any way you like. There's a lot of different ways to flavor risotto. The key about it is, I think, the first step I'm going to show you. All right, our fish is ready. We're going to put that off to the side. The first step in a good risotto, I believe, is we're going to take, let me grab a knife here, a little bit of butter. What you want to do is you're going to start the pan with butter and you're going to finish the pan with butter. I know some, some cooks will do this with oil, but if the whole dish is about creamy texture and it's going to be butter to finish, then I think you always start the pan with some butter to begin with. So in the butter, I'm going to add a little bit of our shallots that we cut up here, okay? And I got my nice high flame going, which I'm going to keep an eye on, because the next thing we want to do is we want to take this risotto, and this is the way Grandma would do it. She'd do it with a wooden spoon. The idea of the risotto is we want to get the After shallots here. After it. Grandma smacked me with it. Right. How do you know? That's why, wait a minute, where's the spoon that's the, with the broken handle? My grandmother, she was about four foot ten. She was, she was a little peanut. But boy, I tell you, everybody, everybody knew she was the boss, you know. She had uh, a backhand. My dad has the same backhand. Pow! Pow! I'm across the room. So we get the I just, I just can't believe Sorry, Dad. Dad's not going to watch this. Dad's downstate. Anyway, the risotto now, the key to, I think, making good risotto. He used to you. Yeah. Pow! He, my dad, he used to back, he pow me, yeah. Pow. Yeah, Grandpa. Hey, Grandpa. All right, I think now the, the key to this is I want this risotto to touch the bottom of a pan. And the pan is almost dry because the butter got absorbed pretty quickly. The shallots are nice and translucent. They've been softened up. But I want all this to be down the bottom of the pan, okay? Now, what we're doing is we're getting some heat right into that risotto. We're getting some of the starch to be drawn out of it. So that's a great thing. I think a lot of folks kind of freak out. And, you know, the recipe says just keep stirring and stirring and stirring and liquid. And I think the first mistake people make is after they start the pan with oil, then what they turn around and do is they cover this with a lot of liquid. So you end up making risotto soup or rice soup before you start making risotto. But see what I got here so far? I've got a pretty dry pan. All right, it's starting to brown up a little bit. All the butter's been absorbed. Now, this is what I'm looking for. Okay, so nice and simply, a dry pan is what you're looking for here. You're not looking to get this thing going with a ton of liquid, at least not to start. I'm going to lower my flame to about a medium, all right? Now we're going to talk about adding some flavors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some white wine, and this bottle's been, this was a full bottle when I, Matt? Louis. This is a full bottle when I started. Yeah, it's probably Louis, okay. Actually, what you do is you, you use a, a wine that you feel comfortable drinking. So this is the wine we had open. I'll use that. Now, I put this in a fancy speed pour bottle here, you know? I mean, being we're in the restaurant, we use the speed pour. This is some fish stock. If you're cooking along at home, you don't have fish stock. You add the wine, you probably got some wine in the house, let it go for a little bit to cook off the alcohol or it can leave behind a bitter taste, and then a little bit of fish stock, or again, if you're cooking along at home, you want a little bit of water, that would work. Okay, but see what I got here now? I'm not soaked, I'm not swimming in liquid. I'm letting this rice that's been heated through, all this rice has got some heat on it now, I'm letting that rice absorb the liquid as we go. I'm gonna add a little bit of my tomatoes now, a little bit of my green onion, Okay, so I'm just building layers of flavor. And now I'm going to take a little bit of our saffron. First, look at this, Mac. Um, it's, uh, obviously, it's sitting on a yellow cutting board, but if I pulled it up here, can you see that at home? Can you see how it's turned really nice yellow? We've, uh, the, the saffron fronds, strands themselves, there's some red. The rest have kind of dissipated a little color. Dissipated. Wow. <laughs> Scotty's impressed with me. Yeah, no, really, they did. They let some of that color go, and it's flavored that water. So we're going to add our saffron right into there. And instead of adding straight saffron strands to this, we allowed some of the flavor to leach out 
into that water. And look at that. Look at how it's starting to make it a little golden color here. And that's really what a uh, risotto milanese is all about. It's that saffron. So, all right, we start to drop some of the liquid. Now, what you'll do is you'll keep adding a little liquid, whether it's water, stock, or a little of this uh, saffron water. You keep adding it until your rice is cooked. All right, now, I start by, uh, I par cook my rice first in a, in a skillet so I can speed up this process. And that's the, on the only way to do it really in a restaurant without taking 20 or 30 minutes. A little bit of grated cheese. Do not use the grated cheese as a crutch. Don't use the grated cheese as the way to, to make this whole thing kind of thicken up. Because if you do that, all you're going to taste is cheese. You're not going to taste the saffron. All right, so I've got a little bit of butter in there. And still, see, we're back to a dry pan mat. I've got a little bit of butter. I've got a little bit of cheese. OK? Just keep, keep my sides, scrape them down. If you had too much cheese, it'd be too salty, right? If you had too much cheese, it'd be too salty. And all I'd taste is Parmesan cheese. I wouldn't taste risotto. A little bit of cracked pepper. Now, all we need to do to finish this Make a little space here. Is we're going to plate this whole thing. That's ready to go. I got my plate right here. We're going to take our, I think, awesome saffron risotto. I'm going to go right down to my plate here. And you see how it kind of sticks together? See that? What we did was we pulled the natural starch out of the rice. That's why you use one of those three types. Our boro being the most easily found in the market. It's also probably, well, I think it is the least expensive, but it works really well. So if you're cooking home, you're not breaking the budget, right? I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, move some of this around there so we make a nice little pile of our risotto there, okay? Next, what we want to do is we're going to take that fish, which we cooked through. We've got that really nice, beautiful piece of salmon filet here, about four ounces. I'm going to put him right up on top here, okay? And then we've got some of our scallops, which came out beautiful. Look at that. They got some color. See one side here? It's a little color. See the other side? caramelized. We're going to put a little bit now of our shrimps, one on either side there. And to finish this, I've got a little bit of baby arugula. Now, if you want to, that's fine. If you don't want to, a little bit of baby arugula for color and a little kind of peppery bite on the top. I'm going to finish the whole thing. Now, I'm going to bring out the really good extra virgin olive oil. This is a cold pressed extra virgin olive oil. One of the latest ones I'm using. Nothing's, nothing uh, that you need to go out and buy. Just find one that you really like because a, a very good extra virgin olive oil is what you want to dress a plate like this. But keep in mind, there's a lot of different olives out there, which means there's a lot of different flavored or flavors too. Not necessarily flavored added, but flavors to the olives. There's a lot of different flavors to olive oil. So you can buy a bunch of very good olive oils and get a lot of flavor out. And there you go. We've got our trio of fish. Today we used salmon, shrimp, and diver scallops. We did it with a risotto milanese, which is a saffron flavored risotto. Real simple dish. Stick around. I have another great fish dish coming up right after this commercial break.